Today on the Skid Factory, we're talking pee pumps and not the type that you buy on Wish. Welcome back to the Skid Factory. Since last episode, we have been tinkering away, building brackets, making mounts and doing little things that have to be done, else everything will fall out of the engine bay. We've um, made the oil drain, which required basically chopping up the original oil drain, shortening it, turning it upside down, welding it back on and adding a piece of flexible hose. So that's all sorted. So we've got uh, oil in and out there now, so that's ready to go. Would have made a big mess on the floor if I had have forgotten about that, which I almost did. I got to making a few brackets and stuff here and there for um, the hoses, aircon hose, this hose for the coolant overflow or the, what, what do we call this thing again? Leader, I suppose. Don't, I think I ask this every episode, don't I? The mental blank is real. Uh, and also the dipstick uh, is a big flexible unit that bolts on. I don't know where it actually bolts on because it used to have a um, VP pump on it, but I just made a mount to come off the top of the new air horn that we've put on the inlet manifold there. So that's all good to go. We mounted the catch can. It's connecting to the side plate of the, the Cummins, which is, is an aftermarket version. Normally they, they just have sort of a breather that drops down to the ground. Uh, this one here has got two separators in it and two dash 10 lines coming out of it. I think it's pure diesel power. Uh, Rich fitted that when it was in uh, Canada, mainly because the other one was rotted away because that's what happens to them. Uh, so it's got um, Dash 10 400 series hose with a fire sleeve over the top of it uh, up into the Raceworks catch can. It's got some fancy billet brackets and stuff, so it's pretty sweet. It actually fits there pretty nice. Again, I'm waiting for fine stuff that I've forgotten to fit and curse the fact that I've got no room, but so far it's worked out pretty well. Klopfi donated a um, vacuum canister for us because he's going to put a barra in his dead ZD30 so he doesn't need it. I didn't get the bracket so I just made one out of some tin there so that's looking good. Get that powder coated later. Uh, made some power steering lines. Uh, we have done an episode on making power steering lines out of AN fittings and stuff so it'll be up here or over there maybe. I don't know, Woody says there's only one spot it can be, but it's only one of these four things, so. <laughs> How many times have you done that? <laughs> still well, just... it's, it's either there, there, you or there, it's or there. <laughs> it's it's got to be there. <laughs> there's only one place out of those four it can be, so I've covered it. All right. Uh, it's all sorted. So, yep, the pressure line goes straight from the pump to the box. Um, I have anchored it along the front cross member. Hydraulic lines have... In this case, probably about a thousand psi under full load of pressure in them. They will whip back and forward if you don't anchor it. So it's got some just some P clips and stuff, uh, and I've also got the return line running along beside it, straight back into the pump. So pretty simple stuff that you can just buy and make yourself, so you don't have to pay someone else to do it. Woody has been beavering away inside the car there and outside the car, making a mount for the Haltech. IC7 dash. We were going to get a dash mount and just remove the, the original dash completely and just use the Haltech dash, which is doable in many cases. Um, the lads at 3D Racing Solutions were going to make a, a dash mount for us, but when I thought about it a little bit, these things have got dual uh, tanks and it, the gauges in the dash are sort of part of the way that the the little computer that transfers fuel back in, from the secondary tank to the main tank. And I don't know 100% how it works, but I, I figured it's probably best off not to mess around with it because it, it, um, it's a little bit more complicated than it should be. So we've just left the original dash in there and just mounted it in front of it with a, with a bracket that's what he's, what he's made out of a piece of 3mm alley and bent up. So that's going to display anything we need to see and anything else will be just left in the background, you can still see the, the fuel gauges and that sort of thing. So that's good to go. Now our biggest problem is we don't have any parts. So we've tried and tried, 
but we cannot get what we need. I'm waiting for some fuel system bits. They have had to come from the states and getting anything quickly at the moment is not happening. So we are sort of struggling to get the bits we need to plumb up the fuel system and ultimately get it started. So we're so close, this can be a very frustrating time. Um, we're at we're at 90 percent and the last 10 percent is the hardest bit so I'm sure most people have ever done a conversion or, or heavily modified a car are familiar with this issue we have made a start on the fuel system to try and get a get ahead of the game a little bit this is the uh, in tank unit uh, originally it just has a three eighth um, they call it a straw which I think is pretty cool I don't think we call that in Australia but we just call it a pickup, but that's the uh, original uh, pickup that the um, ZD30 used. Um, so I had a bit of concerns about whether that was going to be big enough for the engine. Um, it was a bit hard to get any information from people, but um, making it bigger was the general um, gist of things. So I got um, just a hydraulic fitting uh, from my mate Bully and a receiver like it's actually a, sort of an adapter that they had and I welded the adapter into the top hat and welded a I think it's actually a three-quarter line but a bit oversized but that's what fitted in there and that accepts a dash 10 fitting so we've removed the original return line which is that small unit there we're going to use that 3 8 line as the return from the p-pump and that's going to feed the uh, air dog when we get it that's going to be down the back on the chassis rail it's going to have a couple of filters with it and then I'll run dash 8 which is half inch under pressure up to the p-pump and then dash 6 return which will eventually get back to here so we've got it all planned out we just need the pump basically so once we get that we'll be good to go I noted there was quite a few comments uh, in the comment section of various videos on this build about what is a p-pump um, what's the difference what are we talking about that's fair enough if you're not in the diesel world you probably have no idea what the difference between P pumps and VEs and VPs and common rails are so I'll try and explain it as simply as I can a P pump is an inline pump as you can see there's six outlets going to pipes that then go to the injectors inside that pump is basically a camshaft and it's timed to fire these injectors at the right time and your combustion occurs. A VE pump is basically I like a distributor in a spark engine. It's got a single plunger and it's got a distribution system that then delivers from that plunger to a delivery valve that then goes into the pipe and to the injector. So the big difference between them in power capability and why people love the P-Pump is that it's got six of those uh, plungers and the VE pump's only got one. So it's basically got six, time, six times the fuel flow capability rather than a single uh, plunger. So it's also very easy to modify this pump. You can pull out these delivery valves and put bigger ones in um, you can pull this back off and put a fuel plate in it you can change the governor springs it, they're very easy to modify it's a couple of hour job to double the engine power in a stock dodge ram um, of this age with a p-pump on it so that's why people love them so much easy to modify and who doesn't who doesn't love that the ve pump however has advantages it is for a start it's half the size or a quarter the size it it, it takes much less engine power to drive it in one of the videos i think rich explained that this is like a, a little mini engine being driven by the main engine just to, to inject the fuel uh, the v pump is much smaller it doesn't um it doesn't use as much power just to drive it because it's only got one uh, plunger so that's an advantage it also has dynamic timing control it's got mechanisms inside the case that will change the injection timing throughout the engine range which helps with drivability and efficiency so 
it does have its advantages and you can get a lot of power out of a VE pump if it's an automotive version. And these did, the Dodge Ram engine did have a VE pump prior to um, 1996. I'm not sure why they changed to a P pump, but um, if, you got, if you're looking for an engine and you find one with a VE pump, there's nothing wrong with that. You can still modify them, it's quite easy. Um, they're pretty big in the UK because most of their stuff had uh, VE pumps on it over there. And um, my mate Nick Steggle from the UK gave me the, the skinny on how they work and why they're, they're good and why you can still use them. So if you're an Aussie and you're looking at doing this conversion and you don't want to do it the expensive way like I have, you look at VE pumps. It, there's nothing wrong with them. They're easy to modify. You can buy lots of parts for them and they work really well. The other type of pumps that they, you would see on them is a VP, which is what the 24 valve engine has um, initially in between 98 and 02. Uh, this cylinder head had a VP pump on the original engine that we um, pulled apart and used one of two on. They are basically an electronically controlled VE pump. When I was quizzing Nick about the differences between the two, um, one of the biggest things that he mentioned was that the P-pump is both lubricated and cooled by engine oil from the engine. So it's got an oil feed going into the pump and then it um, sort of drains back out through the, through the front case. Uh, the VE pump and the VP pump, however, do not have that. They are lubricated and cooled by fuel. So they need a constant supply of diesel going through them um, more than what it requires to make the engine run because it needs to use it to lubricate it and cool it and then return some of it back. Uh, and the problem with VP pumps is they had a, a um, pump on the side of them that would fail and then it would still draw fuel but it wouldn't be enough to, to cool the, the pump down and then the electronics would be damaged. So there's nothing wrong with a VP pump except for that. Uh, so again, if you're looking for an engine, don't discount it just because it's got a VP44 on it. If it's running and you can see it running and it works, it's probably still okay. Just put a good uh, fuel system on it like we're going to put on this. Keep it cool and it'll work perfectly well. Uh, the next up on the line would be a common rail engine, which uh, if I'm honest, that's going to be the best engine for drivability and the engine running correctly and they also put out a lot of power so I'm not scared of electronics I, I like technology and I probably would go with a common rail had it not been for the opportunity to build this unicorn engine in Canada so again don't be shy of the common rails they're very very hardly built they're not like a Hilux or something that spits injectors every five minutes it's a truck engine, so everything is better quality than a three litre like car engine, which is what this would have had in it. Uh, so again, don't be shy. They're easy to modify, easy to wire up. They work. I hope that answers some basic questions about the difference between P-Pump and VE and VP. Um, I don't know everything about these things. I just ask other people, gain some knowledge, ask Google, uh, thanks to um, Nick Stegel from Steg Supplies for the VE pump info. Nick does sell parts for VE pumps, so if you've got a VE Cummins and you want to hop it up, check out Steg Supplies. Uh, he's a good lad. Um, Rich has also got some good videos on his channel. Rich has some very good videos on uh, both P pump and VE pump. Um, some, I think he had a VE on his 4BT that was in his little Tahoe and he messed around with changing the all the settings on that and it was quite interesting the stuff that i had even just coming stuff he's got some great videos on it plenty of coming stuff that's how i found the boss garage because i like cummins and i got on youtube and sure enough there he was so check him out heaps of interesting stuff as i mentioned we are waiting on parts for this and can't guarantee there's going to be an episode next week on this, but we will have an episode. Uh, unless a, um, one of those Amazon drones delivering uh, uh, fuel pumps turns up, I'm not sure what we're going to be able to do. So this happens. 
We try to avoid it, but everyone's only human and we can only do what we can do. However, Woody just spent his YouTube hundreds on a new car, so oh, yeah. we're just going to have a little check out of that and maybe do a bit to it and what fix about, that up. Hang on, hang on. I'm getting two cars this week. Oh, yeah. He spent his, all of his YouTube hundreds. <laughs> spent my house deposit. <laughs> That's a great idea. Oh, no, it's a stupid not. idea. So we'll... Um, Should we do videos on both of them? We, or don't not? we have to fix one of them so you can go and get the other one? Well, no, nah, I'm going to get the other one responsibly. With it? I don't really want to buy a car and drive it 200 k's and tow a car back. It's kind of stupid. That sounds like something you'd do. Yeah. <laughs> you've, but, been, you've been towing cars with that Challenger for years. That's yeah. A, that sounds way more dangerous. Exactly you're right. Who needs tread on your tyres? <laughs> So, okay, so next week, video of my new car, and the following week, video of my other new car, or fuel system? What what are we doing? Well, it depends if it gets here or not. True that. There we go. This is like three days before you're watching it, by the way. <laughs> we, we've left it as late as we can, but there's nothing much we can do about it if we don't have the bits. So, um, hit us with some questions on the comments section if you've got any pump. Take a guess at what car Things. I've purchased. Take a guess at what cars Woody's cars. purchased. Um, they're actually not too bad. Hey, smiling. That'll be, you know, that'll that'll confuse them. I actually don't mind these cars. <laughs> All right. I like this bracket here holding this dipstick better, but it's the simple things. Look at that. Look. <laughs> simple pleasures thanks for watching sorry it's boring but that happens sometimes if you want to do something interesting jump on our store and buy one of these new hats how sick are they it's got ventilation at the back for your bald head perfect see you next week thanks for watching I already said that. Did you? Yeah. Do it again. Thanks for watching. You might be able to hear me if you start that up. Yeah, it will. You reckon? Do you reckon it'll give away what people might not find out what it is? Why? Because it sounds like a gurgly, droney four cylinder diesel. I'm not sure a black four wheel drive is the best idea, to be honest. Got an iDrive. <laughs> You zooming in on me? Yeah. This is why I grow a beard, because otherwise you'd just have shots of my nose hairs. <laughs> There's only one way to cover them up. So, does this mean I can push a Challenger off a cliff? No, you can't do that. Why? Because. I, I'm pretty sure it would do it. How about we, how about when you install a winch to your patrol, you can winch it off Mount Killer, Mount Killer Pajero? I can't fit a winch, I've got an intercooler in the way. We well, will hook a tow strap to the roof. So we'll off. push it off and then... After I push bash it though. See if we can find a winch and if it's not, we'll just leave it there. Yeah, we'll make it as a problem. Habitat. Habitat. <laughs> Creating a reef for the wildlife. Go and shit. <laughs>